Hey everybody, today we're constructing frequency distributions. Suppose we have a set of quantitative observations, like this one. In other words, basically just a list of numbers. We'd like to get a feel for the shape, center, and spread of the data, but we aren't going to get far just by staring at it. We want to summarize the data somehow. The first tool at our disposal is the frequency distribution. Basically, we're going to divide the data into a bunch of different classes and then count how many observations are in each class. Like so. Here, I've divided the range from 11 to 25 into five classes and then counted how many observations fall into each of those classes. The notation here with the hard bracket on the left and the soft bracket on the right means that the left endpoint is included in each interval, the right endpoint is not. This means that the boundary values, 14, 17, 20, and 23, always go in the next class up. Also notice that the class widths here are all the same. These widths are all equal to 3. Here, by just by looking at the frequency distribution, I can already get a little bit of a feel for the shape of my data. The center is around um, 18, somewhere in the 17 to 20 class. Um, there's a big spike there, and then the rest of the data is relatively symmetric about that spike. Here's a step-by-step -step process for constructing a frequency distribution. First, decide how many classes to use. There's no hard and fast rule, but usually between 5 and 20 classes is a good place to start. If you don't use enough classes, the frequency distribution um, won't show you enough detail and you won't be able to get a feel for the data. And if you use too many classes, the counts in each class are going to be very low, and once again, you won't be able to get a feel for the shape of the data. Once you've decided on the number of classes to use, you want to compute class width. You do that by first computing the range of the data, taking the maximum value minus the minimum value. Then you divide that range by the number of classes to get the class width. You should always round that up. That way, every one of your observations will fall into one of the um, classes. If you ever round down, you run the risk that not all of your data will fall into one of your classes. Then, find the lower boundaries for the classes. Start with the minimum to get the first lower boundary, then add the class width to get the lower boundary of the second class, and so on. Each class is going to end just below the next class. Finally, go through and count how many observations fall into each class. Here's a full example. Construct a frequency distribution for the following data using eight classes. So the range here is 115.5 minus 52.0, or 63.5. I want eight classes, so I divide that number by eight, and I get 7.94. I round that up to get 8.0. The lower boundary of my first class is going to be 52, and then I start counting up by 8.0, 52.0, 60.0, 68.0, and so on. The classes are all going to end just below the next boundary up. So the classes look like from 52 to 60, 60 to 68, 68 to 76, and so on. Again, notice that the boundary values always belong to the next class up. Next, I go through my data set and just count how many values, how many observations fall into each of these ranges. I get 11, 8, 9, and so on. Again, notice that the classes do not overlap and that they always have the same width. That way, every observation falls into one and only one class. Also notice that the total of all the frequencies is the size of the data set. In this case, 50. Just looking at this frequency distribution, we can see that observations are more likely to lie near the lower end of the range, from 52 to 116, than the upper end. It's frequently helpful to expand this table, adding columns for the class midpoints, the relative frequencies, and the cumulative frequencies, like this. So the midpoints are literally the middle of these intervals. So I did the average of 52 and 60 to get 56, the average of 60 and 68 to get 64, and so on. We compute relative frequencies 
by dividing each frequency by the total size of the data set. So here, dividing by 50. 11 by, divided by 50 is 0.22. 8 divided by 50 is 0.16, and so on. This gives you a feel for the frequency that isn't dependent on the size of the data set. We compute cumulative frequency for each interval by adding the frequencies for that interval and all the ones that come before. So the first interval from 52 to 60 has a cumulative frequency of 11, the same as the frequency. The next class from 60 to 68 has a cumulative frequency of 19. That's 11 plus 8, the two classes that came before. Then 28, we add 19 plus 9. 35 is 28 plus 7, and so on. The sum of the frequencies should be the total size of the data set. The sum of the relative frequencies should always be 1. Um, and the very last value in the column of cumulative frequencies should be the size of the data set again, 50 in this case.